Guys, one more video for today. Obviously, I just wanted to pump out as much videos as possible today since I haven't been posting for quite some time. But obviously, there's one more matchup that I want to talk about today that is a very interesting matchup on the prelims. It's Nate Launderer with a 14-3 record versus Julian Rosso who has a 24-9 record. Obviously, this is going to be an intriguing matchup because both of these individuals love the stand and bang. Both these individuals are pretty wild. So obviously, you're going to see a lot of violence when it comes to this fight. You're going to see a lot of sloppiness when it comes to this fight as well. Because when you think about Lane Launder, you think about his fight with Darren Ink Elkins and both those guys are going at it. It was a bloody mess. And late, not, late, Nate Launderer, he, he's kept on screaming, Dana! Dana! Sign the checks, Dana! Give me that performance bonus, Dana! <laughs> and he's just freaking blasting Darren Elkins. He's all bloody, and he has Darren Elkins' blood all over him. And it's crazy. His, his, his fight before Darren Elkins was a loss to Herbert Burns, and obviously Herbert Burns is a very special individual in his own right. He's the brother of Gilbert Burns. He's very... Good with his BJJ, obviously. His BJJ is unprecedented. It's absolutely out of this world, just like his brothers. And obviously, th those two fights are obviously hard fights in their own right to have. So obviously, for a guy like Nate Launder, he's definitely been battle-tested during his time in the UFC. And you also got Julian Erosa. He's literally been in and out of the UFC. Nate Launder's 31 You've got Julian Arosa, who's 32. So both of these fighters are literally in the prime of their careers. Julian Arosa has been in and out of the UFC at least three to four different times. Released, brought back on, released, brought back on, mostly because when he was brought back on from the UFC, he lost his fight. They released him, bring him back, lost, loses another fight, kick him out. And it's literally a back and forth situation with the UFC and Julian Arosa. But since the UFC is the UFC, Julian always comes back. This last couple of fights was against Julio Arce and also Grant Dawson. He lost those two fights before coming back once again to the UFC and beating Sean Woodson by third round Darce Choke. So obviously that submission gave him the fight of the night that day. And he taught the fight on short notice. He took the fight on short notice. So obviously, Julian Erosa, Juicy J, as they call him, he is a game individual. He's game to get it on with anyone in that whole entire UFC roster if he would had to. Just because he's trying to make a living for himself. He doesn't want to sit on the couch. He wants to be active. And his wish has come true. Obviously, he's been on the Ultimate Fighter. He's been on Dana White's Contender Series. He's been on the main roster. Cut. Brought back on. Cut. Brought back on again. So obviously, Julian Rosa has a lot to fight for. He has momentum coming into this fight for the very first time in a long time. And he's not just a new guy coming into the UFC. Like I said, Light Launder, he's 14-3. and three. Juicy J, Julian Rosa, his record is 24-9. and nine. He is close to 40 fights, probably... If more than 40 fights in his career because he also fought as an amateur. He went 10-0 as an amateur. So, obviously, he has about maybe close to 50 fights in all if you include amateur and professional. So, obviously, Julian Rosa has a lot of experience, a lot more than Launder has. But when we think about this fight, it's definitely going to be a slobber knocker. Both these guys don't care about the amount of damage that they take inside the Octagon. They just want to get a W, and you're definitely going to see a lot of of fists flying is this going to be Chris combinations left and right no I think it's going to be just wild swing from the first bell I mean the first horn because the UFC uses horns they don't use bells to the first horn all the way to the last horn I believe it's going to go down to the distance I don't believe there's going to be a finish in this fight but if I'm Julian take it down to the ground because that, that was just bread and butter during his fight with Sean Woodson and he was getting pieced up by Sean Woodson. He almost got finished by the guy for crying out loud. And he was able to come back and submit him via Darce Choke. If you had that type of success against a guy such as Sean Woodson, who's no joke, then use that success and bring it over against Nate Launder. Obviously, Nate Launder is no joke when it comes to the ground either, but that's going to be his success right there. If you want to try to knock Nate out, Nate's a hard guy to knock out. Trust me. But 
if you want to have the most success possible, if you want to win the fight, if you want to get the W, you take him down and work Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because it's definitely you definitely have he definitely has the skills down there to get the job done. Nate Launder, I think his key to victory is going to be volume. He's going to want to throw as many strikes as possible. Whether it's leg kicks, whether it's the hooks, the uppercuts, the jab, working the jab a couple times as a distraction to sneak in the right uppercut or the right hook. Or if he's another way around, throw the right jab, come in there with the hook, or kind of just sneak in a leg kick or anything like that. Volume's going to be the name of the game for him. He's going to have to... Defend the takedowns no matter what. Making it to an ugly fight like he's usually done in the past. Get Erosa down or get him against the fence of the octagon. Rub his face against the octagon with his uh, with his shoulder. Get that shoulder pressure in there. And uh, just swing away. Swing away no matter what. Because like I said, Leighton Launder isn't the most technical fighter out there. But his style works for him. Every mixed martial artist has a style that's particular to them. That only they can be able to pull off. That works for them. So obviously it doesn't matter if these two fighters don't have the most skills. It doesn't matter if they're the cleanest fighters out there when it comes to their striking, their combinations, their transitions on in the ground when it comes to BJJ, their wrestling takedowns. It doesn't. As long as you have a style and as long as it works for you, then you will be able to get the job done. If you ask me who's going to win this fight, I think it's going to be Julian Arosa because Julian has a lot to... Actually, both of these fighters have... A lot of things to lose when it comes to this next fight. Whoever loses could possibly cut be cut by the UFC. The UFC literally cut 11 to 12 guys this past weekend. One of those guys happened to be Antonio Carlos Jr. He was a well-known middleweight in the UFC and a well-known stable name as well. So if they cut a guy like that. They also cut Marcus Perez as well. If you guys don't know who Marcus Perez is, he's the guy that always came into the weigh-ins. He dyed his hair green for a day or so and painted his whole entire face white so he could be able to look like the Joker. He even had kind of like the lipstick with the red coming all the way up to like his his cheeks just like just to show everybody that he looked like the Joker. And he came into those weigh-ins like that, which is just, it was creepy. It was pretty cool. But even he got cut, which is absolutely crazy. But he asked for... He, he asked to be cut by the UFC because they didn't think he was ready. But like I said, UFC has been cutting, basically releasing people left and right. Whether they have a name or whether they have a well-known name. It doesn't matter. So whoever comes into this fight and loses is most likely going to be cut by the UFC. So both of these guys have everything to lose coming into the next matchup. Which is why I believe it's going to be a fight of the night potential type of matchup. So obviously, if you ask me... Julian Rosa is going to get the job done. He's been in and out of the UFC for the majority of his career, and he wants to be a main stable in the UFC, whether he's in the rankings or not, and I believe he'll be able to get it done via submission. And I believe this submission is going to come down in the third round, just like his last fight. So I hope you guys enjoy the fights this weekend. I will be coming out with a brand new video tomorrow talking about the main event itself. There are a lot of names on this card that I don't know because the UFC just put in a bunch of fights as as a result of the majority of these fights being canceled in the past and them needing to put these fights on a card, they put it on this one. And why not? Because this matchup, this main event between Curtis Blades and Derek Lewis, we've been waiting for it for about four to five months now, and we're finally getting it. So appreciate you guys for watching this video. <laughs> stay safe, stay blessed, and I will see you guys later.